Morning chemistry fans, I am here with our trusty assistant to demonstrate the gas stoichiometry lab. At this point, uh, I hope you have downloaded the uh, basic procedure and the outline of the lab off of Schoology. If you haven't, you can do that right now and pause, or at least you want to record the data that we're going to give you. Um, here's the setup. We are going to do a reaction that's gonna produce a gas. It's gonna be mixing this little strip of magnesium metal um, with some hydrochloric acid. And it'll have a reaction and produce some hydrogen gas. And it will get a volume. Um, how we're gonna do that is you'll see as we mix it up. This is called a udiometer. It's a gas tube. It'll collect the gas. We'll read the volume right off of it. It's, it's uh, measured right there, it's accurately marked. Um, in milliliters, we will read that off uh, to see what we get. That'll be our experimental volume. And then in the, in the analysis, you'll be doing the stoichiometry to get what the theoretical volume should have been off of this, uh, between the mass of this and the hydrochloric acid. Anyhow. So what we have is this magnesium strip of which it is 0 0.078 grams. Again, that's 0 0.078 grams. Now, what I'm gonna do is, uh, with my camera here, I have this stopper, it's got a hole in it, and it's got a piece of copper wire through. Uh, and I'm just gonna attach this in with the copper wire so that it's there um, so that you'll see as it does its thing and, and, and reacts and starts to dissolve that it doesn't float up to the top of the liquid in the udiometer and stays here. And the reason we use copper, think single replacement reactions, is that uh, with the copper, copper is lower on the scale and won't react. And so the magnesium will work, right trusty assistant? That's, that's a yes, almost, sort of, okay? So that's our 0 0.078 grams of magnesium. Now, I'm gonna do a couple things in this test tube, okay? I'm gonna put in 10, that's 10 milliliters of hydrochloric acid. It is six molar hydrochloric acid. And again, if you're not quite getting all these numbers, we'll, we'll be doing an analysis um, video also uh, to walk through the analysis stuff. But again, 10 milliliters of six molar hydrochloric acid. Okay. The other couple of pieces of information you need to know is right now in the chemistry room, it is 19 degrees Celsius. That's 19 degrees Celsius for temperature. And the pressure in the room right now, uh, day after the big Easter snowstorm, is 101 kilopascals. Okay. It was actually 100.79 something, 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 but it's 101 kilopascals. So that's really a lot of our good data. We have 0 0.078 grams of magnesium. At 19, we have, um, a temperature of 19 degrees Celsius, a pressure of 101 kilopascals, and we are using 10 mils of a six molar hydrochloric acid. Now, you can see the size of the tube and everything else here and, and only 10 milliliters down here. What I'm going to do carefully is then just fill it all the way up and to the rim and brim with no air, no gas, no nothing in there. Uh, I start, you can see, I'm just running and still water down the side till I fill the tube completely up. Um, and that's again, so that really the only gas in there is hydrogen that's produced in the reaction. There will be a little bit of water vapor, but not enough. I mean, if we were in super uh, college, wonderful chemistry, we would be um, calculating backing out the water vapor after the experiment as part of our calculations, but we are not gonna worry about that at this point, okay? Um, part of the reason I was careful to layer this in, as you can see, as I'm getting towards the top, 
is water and hydrochloric acid have a different density? All right, I'm almost full, full, full. There we go, we are full. Over to the top, okay. Now, what I'm gonna do is take my magnesium and the cork and get that in there. Get that sealed up. You can see a little bit came over the top, okay. But with the difference in density, then I have the opportunity to take my time. I have here a beaker of just regular old room temperature sitting here, 19 degrees water. And I'm going to, you won't be able to see it on the camera, but I'm going to flip this upside down. I got my finger over the hole. I'm gonna flip it upside down, get it under water so no air gets in there before I release it. And then what's gonna happen as you'll see is, once I get that set up, then with the density of the hydrochloric acid, it's going to fall down and eventually it's going to work its way through the water and it's going to hit the magnesium and then it's going to start the reaction. And you'll see the reaction because you'll see the gas is bubbling. Anyhow, I need to get this underwater. And I absolutely did it successfully with no air coming in. I'm going to clamp it in the clamp. I'm keeping the cork underwater. Okay, and um, there's, without my zooming it up and giving you the opportunity to see it, you can see the difference in density and you can see the hydrochloric acid coming down. Okay. And what we'll see in a short period, I hope, um, is that you're gonna see a bunch of gas bubbles coming in. I'm going to clean my area a little because I spilled a little when I filled it to the top. And we'll see if we can get some gas bubbles. Let's see if I pull it closer. You might be able to see what's going on. And that's all we're waiting for. We're going to wait. It's hitting the magnesium down there. You can see a little reaction going. It's not very vigorous at all right now. There's a couple of tiny little bubbles uh, coming through here right now. Um, but it will get more active as it really opens up. If I had uh, taken the time, I could have polished up the magnesium a little and taken some of the oxidation off, but it doesn't matter. It's going to work. All right. Little bubbles, more little bubbles are starting to pop out. And then because of the hole in the cork, then as it produces the hydrogen gas here, um, it is going to push the water and stuff. Uh, it's just going to push everything out, the fluid. And actually, if you think about the reaction, see, maybe you can see, uh, you can start seeing, I, th I think on my screen, I can see bubbles coming up. Uh, you're you're going to be making uh, a magnesium chloride solution, but it's in water. So it's all dissolved there. And you can probably start seeing a bunch of bubbles uh, coming through here. Okay. It's really getting active right now. And again, part of the reason of having it attached to the copper wire, besides the copper wire not reacting and only the magnesium reacting with the hydrochloric acid, is then it holds it down at the bottom. At some point, it'll break away. I mean, at some point, it's dissolving enough and, and reacting enough that it will. And then we just have to keep an eye that it doesn't get stuck on the sides here. Working well, lots of bubbles. You can start seeing it. It's, it's moving away from the top up here, which you can't see on the thing, but it is, uh, it is starting to produce just gas here. And so we'll just see how this goes. Hey, trusty assistant, isn't this exciting? What do you mean, no? It's a chemical reaction. No excitement there. So now you can see, even if it just kind of looks like a diff different color, it is just filled with bubbles. It looks like your roll aids rolling down. 
if I were to read the gas tube right now, all right, we're at four, we're at five, we're at six milliliters of gas. So it's going pretty quickly. I'm going to clean out my equipment because clean as you go, nice, wonderful chemistry, learning, doing things well. Putting things away. And then as soon as it's done, we're going to read the volume and that will end the experiment. We're cooking pretty good now. We're knocking out a couple of milliliters rather quickly. There's 12. Yeah. Look at those bubbles. Oh, the excitement. See if I can tip this forward a little. Back a little. Yeah, no, you can't see it there. When it gets to a point that you can see, I'll start pointing out where the air is, where the hydrogen gas is. You can see here how I have it, uh, the cork under the water just so there's no air getting in and there's a way for it to jet out. We're around 24 milliliters of gas produced so far. And that's what it is. The volume's going to come out in milliliters. Now, <clears throat> being a gas stoichiometry, um, you're going to use the grams of magnesium, and then you're going to figure out the to get moles, and you're going to find the moles of the uh, acid determining your limiting reactant. And then uh, that limiting reactant is what you'll use to find your moles of hydrogen gas. And with that and the temperature and everything else, you'll be able to calculate volume. But don't forget that the milliliters I'm gonna give you for the experimental value as you fill in your data uh, table is in milliliters. And with the ideal gas equation, we want everything in liters. We're hitting 33, 34, he said, you can see it's, it's cooking pretty good. Now I'm right about where it's getting into your view. You can kind of see right there the edge of the uh, difference between the gas and the, and the reaction going into solution. Now here's a question, how will I know when this reaction ends? I've got a strong feeling that it'll stop bubbling. OK, 
Okay, you can see here, I'll point it out with my finger where, where the gas solution line is right here and it just keeps dropping down. It's not really slowing down right now too much. We're approaching 52 milliliters. This is a 100 milliliter tube. Uh, a little camera experiment. If I put, oh, there you go. See, if I put this darker background here, you can see where the difference is right there. We've just passed 60 milliliters. Still going. We're almost 70 milliliters now. Oh, my two pieces of magnesium have now, or I should say my one piece is separated into two uh, because they broke away from the copper. It dissolved that much and now they're kind of sitting right at the top of uh, the solution as a part of the reaction. And that's another thing I'll visually then be able to see more um, what's going on with the reaction. What we hope, or what I hope, is that it, in, in the good thing was it waited until the reaction was starting to slow down a little bit. Um, as far as it's uh, feisty little bubbling, so it has slowed down a little bit as we get down around here, um, which is good because what can happen on occasion is if it breaks loose too soon and it's still vigorously bubbling, then it can get stuck up here on the sides out of in the gas portion and out of the solution portion and then you have to then you have to do some maneuvering to get it back down uh, so you can get the reaction uh, fired up again. But we have slowed down, um, and now I can just watch it go there. there. Um, again, at this point, it's not that it's not going rapidly, but it's all occurring right up here. If, you were sta if, you, if I could, had a camera that could get close enough really for you to see that, you would see how quickly the magnesium ribbon is. is uh, uh, dissolving, I guess is the best way to say it, reacting, shrinking down in size. We're right around 80 milliliters. I don't think we'll get a whole lot more out of it. But we'll get a few more milliliters. We're right about here right now. I'm gonna work myself down to eye level so that as it 
comes to an end. I can read where we're at. We're about 83 milliliters right now. See, you don't get this kind of excitement on TikTok or Snapchat. It doesn't get any better than this right here. This is science. And we are coming very close to the end here. We've got a little tiny hunk right here. And it's kind of so small, it's starting to drop. And as soon as that little tiny chunk of magnetic, now it's starting to float up again. As soon as that ends, we're done. And it's worked its way back up to the meniscus and it's kind of, it's reacting and kind of swinging around in a circle around the udiometer. We're only going to get another couple of tenths, maybe a tenth or two. Before we are done here. We might get to 86. It'll be close. There's two very small pieces of magnesium metal that are just about done. So we might squeak out to 86. Those are really small little chunks of metal. Just doing this to try and get a better read on it. Get a little color contrast so I can read that menisc carefully. There we go. Last little one is done. Okay. 
and we didn't quite get there. The meniscus tells us, boy, that is really close. But I'm going to trust that meniscus that we are at 85.9 milliliters. There you go. So 85.9 milliliters is your experimental value of hydrogen gas produced. And like I said, we'll do an analysis. Um, video so you can walk through the analysis to complete the lab. Anyhow, there you go. There's a little gas stoichiometry discussion. Um, on behalf of me and my lab assistant, thanks for joining us today and we will talk to you very soon.